Welcome back to News Geelong. A lack of elite teams combined with our unpredictable weather has forced a cancellation to this weekend's FIBA 3-on-3 World Tour qualifying basketball event, scheduled to be played in Geelong, as Mitch Cleary reports. In disappointing news for basketball fans in Geelong, the new 3x3 tournament for this weekend has been postponed. I catch up with Geelong CEO Andrew Scottford for all the latest in why it has been postponed and how a new date can be arranged. A lot of people worked really hard over the last sort of five weeks to make this make this work. We all knew always knew it was ambitious, but we kind of lots of good reasons to really get involved. So yeah, unfortunately, at the end of the day, not enough elite teams to sort of be an FIVB, uh, sorry, to be a fever event. And then we um, made the call with Basketball Australia to go, let's postpone it to a time in summer, uh, date to be confirmed, where we can have an opportunity to showcase this fantastic opportunity down on the waterfront again. How important is it the next one, really, a lot of, uh, the same amount of time and efforts put into to making it bigger and, and better than what this one was hoping to be? Yeah, I think it's just really about finding a really clear time in the calendar just to make sure that, you know, when you're talking to traditional basketball associations and traditional basketballers, they understand there's, you know, when there's a possibility for them to be able to play. But it's also not just about your traditional club v club um, competition. It's also about you getting three of your mates and then, you know, three elite players or four elite players coming together and playing as a team. So it's just continuing to get that message out. I mean, we've had lots of positive feedback about it, but most of the negative feedback was about why, why June, why so quickly? And that was really about qualifying for an event in Russia to be part of the first world tour. That didn't happen, but the reality is let's just take that other momentum and make sure this event adds another profile to Geelong, the city, but also gives people who are passionate about basketball just another product to go and observe or play in. We understand Corey Homicide Williams had landed in Geelong for the event. Disappointing for him to be the ambassador MC of the event and to have to told to go home. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's not going to you're not going to go home without spending a lot of time in Melbourne and doing some of the stuff we probably would have always done. But yeah, disappointing for him that this hasn't got up. But I think he, like a lot of us, understand that you know it was ambitious. You know there was all the right reasons to try to do it. You know, at the end of the day, just getting getting elite teams you know to come to come come together so quickly just didn't happen. But he's going to be someone that also will continue to help push the message and it'll give us an opportunity to to get other high-profile basketball people in Australia and to actually talk about this this property as well um, at a time where you know we had a a longer run at it, you know, make sure that it also engages young kids and, the other, and other parts of our community and then, you know, we're really looking forward in the end of the day to an event sometime in summer where it gets a much higher profile and it's much easier for people to go and, you know, either be involved or go and have a watch. A few of the Siebel, it will be Siebel off season so a few of the Supercats could be involved? Yeah, and that's one of the strengths of moving it to a summer period. I mean, the other thing was always going to move to summer. The reality was because it was a really tight window and we wanted to participate in the first world event, we had to run one now. But it was always then going to be for the future move to summer. And that does exactly right. Open up all the, pl the elite players that play in Siebel, Big V, an opportunity to just make decisions as, you know, as I said, groups of you know, them and three mates to play without having to worry about, oh, goodness, if I win, I go to Russia, then that's two weeks out from when the Siebel finals are on. My club aren't, isn't going to support that. It's going to be harder for me to do that. This gives them up, it does, you know, all but elite players the opportunity to participate and represent Australia at the end of the day. Thank you, Mitch. Unfortunate but supported by a mutual agreement between Basketball Australia and Basketball Geelong. And now it's time for the local footy experts to prognosticate their winning thoughts for this weekend's round of matches in each of the respective leagues. As we go to the man who we feel thinks that St Mary's cannot be beaten in the Geelong Football League, Mitch Cleary. Thanks Rollo and here are my tips for GFL Action Round 8. After tipping six last week, I'm going to take St Mary's to beat St Joey's in another nail biter. The Saints knocked off South Barlow last week, while St Joey's come in off a six day break. In other matches, I'm going to take Newtown and Chuel to beat Lara, Bull Park in the grand final rematch over South Barlow, North Shore too strong for Grovedale, Leopold to beat and John West St Peters, rejuvenated by a new coach, and Colac to be too strong against St Albans. And here's Nathan Curry's tips for BFL Action Round 9. And a quick congratulations to Cuz, who has taken up a new role at Wynn in Bendigo, graduating from Channel 31, News Geelong. Congratulations, Cuz. And his tips, Anglesey to beat Newcomb, his Drysdale to beat Bowen Heads, Queenscliff to be too strong for Mottawari, Ocean Grove to beat Torquay in the match of the round, and Amos to beat Port Arlington. Now it's over to you, Grubby. Thanks Mitch and welcome to Grubby's Tips. G'day viewers for round eight in the GDFL. We have no WRFL tonight because of the bye. Uh, we'll have a look at Carrio and Invalide. Probably Invalide to beat Carrio. 
will go East Geelong to beat West Geelong, Bellpost Hill to beat Anarchy just, uh, Belmont to beat Winchelsea in just over an hour's time out at the Gun Club, Werribee in a real tight one against Bannockburn, and in the match of the day out at North Geelong Oval, Keith Barclay Oval that is, will go for Thompson to beat North Geelong. Thanks, we'll see you next week, and over to you, Troy. In the AFL, it's a split round, and I'm tipping Geelong to defeat Carlton at Etihad Stadium, Richmond to beat Fremantle, St Kilda to, to, to defeat the Gold Coast Suns, Sydney to beat Essendon at Etihad Stadium, Hawthorne to beat Port Adelaide at Amy Stadium, and Collingwood to also defeat Melbourne at the MCG. Now, in the VFL round 11, I'm tipping Willie to beat Box Hill, Casey to beat Collingwood, Bendigo to beat Coburg in Shepparton, and Sandringham to beat Frankston. I'm also tipping, obviously, the Bendigo Bank Cats to defeat Port Melbourne, one o'clock at Simmons Stadium this week. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Troy. And finally, in the Colac and District Footy League tips, round nine. All the home sides are also the current top five. Forest to take the points over Otway Districts. South Colac to beat Irrawarra Biak. Lawn to take the points over Colac Imperials. Simpson comfortably winning over the Western Eagles and Birragara to beat Apollo Bay. The LV Swans have the bye. As we go to a break, we'll return with more sport and weather after this. <laughs> 